All right, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. So I have literally got about an hour and a half. Um, I've got a bit of an evening session now, which I've got a bit of time. I can run to the river and do a quick video. Um, way back when, whenever I first started the channel, I done a, a sort of a beginner's guide to trout fishing, um, just for people that were really getting into it and things like that. So that's really what we're doing. I'm going to have another another attempt at that um but maybe now a few years on but more knowledgeable so on and so forth we'll see how things go um i have fished in the world championships at the high stage um i have you know been fishing for brown trout first fish i ever caught more than 25 years now so it's one of my favorite styles of fishing predominantly like full time with lures i don't bait fish for trout anymore at all so yeah um just to pass on a bit of knowledge to whoever Maybe whoever's watching this video maybe wants to get into trout fishing a bit more, give it a go. I urge you to. It's fantastic. It's one of the best styles of fishing you can really do. It's simple, easy, not overly expensive to get into and really, really enjoyable. But anyway, let's get to the river. Stay tuned and hopefully you learn something. Okay, here we go. So we're at the river. I've got all the all the tackle out for, uh, for you to see and sort of give you a bit of a rundown on everything. Just looking at the river, the river looks good. It's, if you're into the scenery type of things in terms of fishing not so much the river's quite low uh shallow and quite clear which usually means it's difficult um obviously we can see the fish the fish can see us and so on and so forth but you can still get them that's the main thing so i'm going to give you a run through of the tackle that i use now there's lots and lots of different variations and types and whatnot this is what i've sort of whittled it mine down to which i use most of the time and it's three different types of lures predominantly so we'll start off with the spinners. Everybody that knows anything about fishing will have came across a spinner of some sort in their time. Um, these are handmade ones. Um, really, really good. Really, really sort of light and uh, tungsten. So they, they sink quite quick. Um, spin as soon as they hit the water, which is what you want. I'll probably actually start with a spinner today because the water is so low. Um, in my opinion, spinners are probably the absolute easiest way to catch trout they just go mad for them um, not everybody approves of spinners but each to their own then you've got soft plastics so soft plastics are really really effective because they're the most natural looking bait that you can use now these are obviously the hooks that you use these are all small tungsten barbless hooks um, they're all different weights up to like one gram or so and these would be the type of baits in that you would be using, as I said, looking grubs and dragonfly nymphs, all sorts of stuff. They're the most natural looking. The trout, when they grab them, they don't tend to let go. Um, and yeah, so that would be the soft plastics. We'll probably give those a blast today as well. These would probably be a bit more of a, a specialised lure. These would be your wobblers. Um, things like this. Now, I've started using these a lot more over the last couple of seasons and I've noticed that the size of the trout that I've caught has went up really, really, really massively compared to what I used to because I never used these type of lures. It was always spinners, saw plastics, um, so on spoons, worms, whatever. If you want to catch big trout, stick with these. Um, you know, it must bring out the predatory side in them or whatever, I'm not sure. Um, you might spot spinners and saw plastics and stuff in there too. That's just me being messy. Don't worry too much about that. I, I touched on earlier as well about it being reasonably, you know, cheap to get started. Now, this costs quite a bit of money. Once you gather this amount up, this is nothing compared to what I actually do have in boxes. But in general, if you wanted to go, you can buy a couple of spinners. Rod. You know, this is a six foot, one to eight gram rod, four pound line, um, you know, three pound leader. Um, that's it. You know, it's really, really sensitive rod, really light, excellent fun when you catch trout on it. As I said, it's not a, an expensive setup at all. I think the rod itself is about 60 pounds, reels about 70 or 80. So it's a Savage Gear Parallelibum, Parabellum, can't say it. Savage Gear SG8 reel. Um, excellent setup, and as I said, not much, not much money. And just obviously you've got a net then as well. You always should have a net with you. I tend to forget mine regularly. But look, without talking too much more, I want to get cracking. I want to try, catch a few fish anyway. I'm going to start off with the spinners, as I said. It's a really nice evening. Um, it was raining earlier, so a bit of fresh water in the river. 
and uh, yeah, let's get going. Let's see if there's a, if there's proof in the pudding and uh, yeah. Okay, let's get down to the river. So as I said, water's fairly low. Any other time I'm here, the water's usually right up past here. One thing, I, and it, I didn't mention earlier, when you are using spinners, and I see it all the time, people doing social media, when you're using a spinner, always use a barrel swivel of some sort. I'm seeing on Facebook and Instagram and people all the time, they're literally tying their spinner straight onto the line. And what that does when that spins, it spins your line. Your line becomes twisted. And then what happens is it weakens the line and it just ruins it basically. Weakens it. It's not very nice to use or to cast. It's, it's crap really after. So as I said, starting off with the spinner, in my opinion, the easiest lure to use and probably the most effective trout go mad for it all fish go mad for it in its own right perch pike whatever spinners will catch them all so another tip as well when you are coming to the river don't always rush down straight to the edge of the bank you know you want to stand a few feet back Give yourself the best chance so the trout can't see you. Fish in general, you don't want to be spooking them. With spinners, you're always casting, not directly upstream, you're always casting at an angle and letting the flow take it. Instead of casting straight up or straight down, you'll find then that that's the most effective way it'll move and the most natural looking as well. So no bites yet. As I said, the water's quite clear. I can see everything. There hasn't been any follows. So I'll not waste too much time in, a, in an area if I'm not seeing any fish. I'll just keep on the move. That's the beauty of, uh, of this style of fishing. You are light. If it's not working, keep moving. Keep covering water. Keep going till you find them. They are there. You know, the, regardless of if the water's high or low or whatever, the fish can't go anywhere. They'll move to obviously deeper, deeper areas. They'll hide under rocks. They'll live their own. So there's a fish, and it's ah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, first fish. Fortunately, it came off, and it looked like probably the smallest trout I've ever seen in my life. There's there we go. It's a it's a better one straight away after. Um. Barbless hooks, so that's why that one came off quite easy. So sorry, just give my hand a bit of a wet first. Keep everybody happy. There we go. Stunning little fish on the spinner. I'll keep it out of the water too long, but that was straight away after losing one. So one of the best places that you're gonna always get trout is you always have a fast runoff of water and uh, a slower bit you, in general in rivers you're always going to have a fast bit moving into slightly slower deeper water and what will happen is the trout tend to hide or wait just in the off the off the fast bit they'll lie in the slightly deeper water waiting on on whatever they're eating being washed down the river towards them so be it you know insects worms fly, you know anything at all whatever they're eating if it comes down the river, they're sitting waiting on it. So if you are coming to try this style of fishing, they're, they're exactly where you want to be fishing straight away. Here we go, second fish. Almost identical to the first one. This guy wanted all three hooks. The joys of barbless though, come out nice and easy. And there he goes, no harm, no foul. If you get them on the right day and they're feeding properly, you could come and you could catch 30, 40 trout, no problem at all. Especially with spinners. It's so much fun. And as I said, it's really important that you're using the right equipment, you're using the right tackle. The the light rod makes it 
everything feels massive. It, it, it increases the fun so much and makes it so much more enjoyable. You don't want to be coming down here with a big heavy rod. There's a better fish there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you don't want to be coming down. That's going like a tree on that one. You don't want to be coming down with a rod that's far too heavy and taking all the enjoyment out of it. But you also don't want to be coming down with a rod that's too light either. It's not even really a big fish. He's just on steroids, this guy. Settle yourself. Uh, he's not he's not hooked in a nice place, that's maybe why he was wasn't happy. There we go. If we can catch, you know, a good few of them in a short evening session, I'll be over the moon. Thank you for playing. There he goes. The money's at three. It'll be hard not to use a spinner when they're feeding like this on them. And you've seen where I started, I literally started there, you know, I had whatever it was, five, six, seven, eight casts, and never seen a fish, not a bite, nothing. You move into the faster water, or the deeper bit where they're going to be hiding, and bang, three fish, one lost. Crazy. Once you find them and they're in that area, it can just be so easy. One thing you will learn very, very quickly when you are trying this style is your casting needs to be really accurate. And I'm not going to lie, you will lose a lot of tackle. It's just the way it is. It's a tackle hungry technique, tackle hungry method. And you will lose spinners and trees. You're going to snag on the bottom. You're going to just any of the lures that you use, you're going to you're going to lose them. As I said, I've competed at the highest level and every time I go out I'm losing something, usually. It's just the way it is. Okay, so there's been a good few casts now, no bites. What we'll do is, I think we'll just keep moving now, cover a bit more ground and catch a few more, I'd be happy enough. Maybe even change lures, maybe even try some soft plastics, let you have a look at those. There's another fish. <laughs> another small one again. Oh, he just dropped off. Sometimes that's good. You want the least small ones like that. If they can drop off at your feet, all the better. You don't have to mess about with them. Not unless you're in a competition, obviously. Then you'd be netting everything and within sight. And swearing quite a lot. If that dropped off in a competition. Okay, that was the last one. Bring this in and then I'm going to move on. Okay, next spot I'm going to show you is the next technique as well. And we're moving on to soft plastic. So one gram barbless hook, one gram jig head, and we're going to use a honeyworm, this particular lure is called, soft plastic, imitates some sort of maggot or grub or whatever, it's almost like chewing gum if you want to touch it, and the way you fish these is you want it to look as natural as possible, so I'm casting it in and just letting the flow take it down the river, but all the while I'm just putting a slight tap and the only reason I'm doing that is just to stay in contact with the lure, keep it off the bottom. And if the trout or anything at all grabs it, you know, I'll feel it. 
this is where the the hive is lying is really important so not even i can't watch the lure because it's under the water i'm watching the line if there's a a tech the line will shoot straight and that's a sure sign then that there's a fish there was a that was a bite there and again so two bites there small hits just nothing nothing big i'll do that same run again Right, nice corner here. Again, back to my theory. Fast runoff into a nice sort of deeper stretch. I said deeper, it's not very deep at all, but you do get fish then it will lie in it. I would like a bit more water in the river, just unfortunately I can't control that, so make do with what we have. Same again, just casting it in, letting the flow take it down. We want it to look as natural as possible. That was a bite there, missed him. But I know where he lives. Hopefully he didn't feel the hook. We'll go back after him. Okay, so we lost the soft plastic. As I said earlier, it does happen quite a bit. So what I've done is I've actually put the spinner back on because I did get a bite in there. I cast over it then a couple of times after with the soft plastic again and it was, wasn't interested so it obviously felt something or it just wasn't right. So um, always a good tip if, if you do find that happening, you know if you get a bite and then all of a sudden nothing, stick, change your lure straight away. I, got an, I just got a bite on the spinner again. But change your lure straight away. If they think something is wrong they'll not take it. Honestly they'll completely switch off. So they obviously didn't like that soft plastic. They give it a taste, wasn't to their liking. So spinner on straight away, or whatever other lure you want to try. It's definitely first there. It's just putting something across their nose that they want at the time. Unfortunately, I'm running out, of, running out of light, so I don't really have a lot more time to go through more lures and go into more into more stretches of the river. But if I can make it my mission to, to catch the fish that keeps hitting this this lure, I'll call that a success anyway. But We've had a good look at what, you know, what does work. Spinners are obviously really good, soft plastics, wobblers. All really, really good lures that you should always have in your box. If you're looking to target the bigger trout, get on the wobblers. Top tip. Definitely more fish in this corner, 100%. I'm not giving up until I catch one.
There we go. Told you. <laughs> Told you he was there. <laughs> That's it. Fortunately, it's just starting to get a bit too dark, so I haven't hit the road. Um, I hope that was insightful. I hope you learned a bit for, as I said, for the newcomers to the to the sport that really wanted to get into this. It's super fun, super easy. That, that was literally an hour I spent. I don't know, what, six, seven fish, something like that. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's, it's not expensive to get into. It is expensive if you start to gather this stuff up because nothing is really that cheap in fishing or cheap in life anymore. Um, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It certainly means a lot. We're really getting close to the 6,000 subscribers, so um, appreciate that. Another thing as well, if you don't already know, castnorthangland.com um, it's the new web shop that we have up and running there that we've attached to the youtube channel and um, there's no trout stuff on it yet but there is lots of custom lures and traces and things like that um, any supports really greatly appreciated so check that out if you're looking to buy any sort of predatory fishing tackle it hopefully will be on that very soon so yeah look i've just got to go hike this bit of a mountain here see you in the next one